Before we get into this video, I have a huge announcement. Me, the Pokeraf, Ozimitsu and Pokedan will be hosting our own Pokemon YouTube panel at London Anime Con on February 16th, 2019. I honestly can't believe I've gotten an opportunity like this, but I'm super excited for it. If you are within the UK area and want to meet me there, I'll leave the Anime Con details in the description below. The actual panel will happen at 2pm GMT on the gaming stage, and I'll even be trying my best to livestream the actual panel to this YouTube channel. With that said though, let's now roll the intro for this video. What's going on guys, I'm Ernst Maze, and recently a brand new episode for the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime aired on TV. Episode 106, we have a sea and we have a valley, great intensive evolution training, which it was a uh, interesting time watching the episode, to say the least. So because of that, I've decided for today's video that I will review this latest episode. Hopefully getting yourself to check out the episode 2 if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments down below for today's question of the day though, what you personally thought of this episode. i love to hear. With my intro for this video now said though, let's jump right into this review. So the episode begins off with all of our characters becoming motivated to accomplish more for their personal Pony Island research projects. Today in particular, focusing on Sophocles' project, on visiting Fast Pony Canyon with Ash, Kyori and Hapu to evolve his charger book into Viki Vault, and Lana's project on training with her role model Ida to make Popolo become stronger and maybe even learn a new move, with Milo and Lily watching in the distance. This episode switching back and forth between the two. Firstly though, let's focus on telling Sophocles' story. He explains at the start of the episode that his children book can somehow evolve in Fast Pony Canyon, though for a unknown reason. But despite that, him, Ash, Kyori and Hapu travel to Fast Pony Canyon to see how they can activate the evolution. Though along the way, Sophocles experiences technical difficulties with his device, which he soon realises later on into the episode that the magnetic field that Fast Pony Canyon has must be how Charger Bug evolves, which indeed it is. But before we see the evolution, we see the return of these guys from the Chargeable Grace episode. Oh, hello there. <laughs> and surprisingly, Horatio, the main guy, wants to evolve his Chargeable much like Sophocles does. Here are another bookstone in Fast Pony Canyon which should evolve his Pokemon. Though, Rotom does point out that no bookstone exists. Which, as we find later on, the stone that Horatio finds anyway does not evolve his Pokemon. But yeah, going back, Sophocles and Horatio make it better that whoever gets the stone first gets to evolve their Charger Bug, and they ain't allowed to get no help from their friends, which Sophocles accepts, going on a mini journey in the cave to find the Bug Stone, which it was a uh, decent journey I guess. But like I alluded to earlier on, Sophocles realises his Charger Bug evolves from the magnetic field that Fast Pony Canyon has, not the stone, as it evolves once it saves Hiroshio and his Charger Bug from falling down on a bridge. Which was a uh, decent story too, I guess. Though, it could have been a lot better. This story then ends off with Hiroshio telling himself that he will evolve his Charger Bug one day and then compete in a Viki Vault race against Sophocles to finally get his first win. Which, I'm so down to see a Viki Vault race. I love the Charger Bug race episode. Moving on to Lana's side of the story though, she does conduct a little bit of training to make her Popplio stronger. Though, it was mostly just having fun with Eevee and Ida's new fully evolved Primarina, which Lana didn't really want to just have fun. But Ida then tells Lana that just as long as she remembers the sound of the ocean or whatever, she can conduct training on her own with Popplio, as Ida does need to leave the next day. We also then see a brief cameo of Melton's mystery box from Pokemon Let's Go and even Melton itself, which is pretty cool for shadowing for later episodes. Once Sophocles returns home from his journey though, everybody enjoys a performance from Ida and Primarina by using the Primarina exclusive Z-Move, 
But upon seeing the giant bubble Primarina makes, this motivates Lana to make a bigger bubble with a Poplio. As of course, her goal is to explore the sea in a giant bubble. So, her and Poplio then go off to do some late night training. And then the overall episode ends off with Lana in the morning, showcasing Ida before she has to leave, how big and her Poplio made their bubble. But unexpectedly when making the bubble, Poplio ends up evolving into the adorable Brion. Which Ida finds this remarkable, and then provides Lana her own Primarina Z Crystal. Which pretty much confirms that Brioni will evolve again in the future, which will be stunning. With that story now said though, let's now move on to my overall thoughts regarding this episode. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when the episode ended for me, I felt very conflicted about the episode. It had many good factors, yet it also had many disappointing factors. I also had no idea how other people felt about the episode, so I took to Twitter and Cerebi forums, and what do you know, it seems like the episode is either overall great for the fanbase, or overall disappointing. It's been 50-50, with very few people who are standing in the middle with these conflicted feelings, just like me. So, that's kind of a relief to know that the fanbase are somewhat conflicted overall too, not agreeing on one side as I didn't really want to be the odd one out, despite always giving my 100% honest opinions for these reviews. Just please though, as always, be sure to respect my point of view I'm about to elaborate more on, as I always respect yours in the comments down below. Alright, so to give more of a picture of what I'm on about, let's start talking about what I felt like the disappointing factor was regarding this episode. And yes, it's only one disappointment. However, as you will see, it plays a very large role which makes me have my conflicted feelings. Anyway, yeah, let's start this off. Because the episode kept switching back and forth between Lana and Sophocles, I felt like we didn't really get to see the full magnificent stories, but rather, crammed down, cut, rushed versions on them. If the anime writers actually allowed these two plots to be two separate episodes, I feel like I'd have enjoyed each of their stories a lot more, as each character would have the full 22 minutes instead of the lacking shortness in this episode. In fact, when I take a look at Sophocles' story more, I envision way more obstacles for the cave, which could have been exciting to watch. Yet, all we really got was the simple journey to the cave, the gold bat in the cave, and the ending. That's it. Though, I will admit, I still do appreciate one thing when it comes to this plot, which I shall mention later on. As for Lana's side, I would have definitely showcased a lot more training than what we received. And yes, I know there's the ocean lesson Ida told Lana, but that just almost felt like an excuse to wrap up her story sooner. Not to forget too, that the evolution towards the very end of the episode just sort of happened. Very anticlimactic. So, seeing more training on screen would have made it feel more satisfying rather than the current unsatisfying feeling I am currently feeling. Again though, there is at least one thing I can appreciate when it comes to Lana's plot, but that will come later on into this video. Overall though, yeah, maybe it was a bad idea to cram two plots and evolutions into one episode. I get that there's only really up to October or November most likely to wrap up everything in the series, which is like 30 or less episodes, but surely the writers could have found space to make this episode become two separate episodes. I truly do believe it would have worked way better. With our fast disappointment now stated though, let's now start to bring up some positives shall we? So firstly, although this is definitely a smaller positive than the ones I'll bring up later, I like how these guys from the Chargeable Grace episode, and Ida and her boyfriend, made an appearance once again. It just showcases you even more how everybody in this region matters, not just Ash and his friends. This being, everyone's story. And yes, pun intended. But seriously, did you ever expect to see these characters again, and even all the other characters of the days? I certainly didn't. But it's lovely to know that the anime cares about them to provide them more stories. Hell, their original title as Character of the Day doesn't even fit anymore, as they appear again and again. Moving on to the next positive factor though, although the story for both Chargeable and Popplio evolving may have been weak due to their cramped screen time, 
I at least appreciate how Sun and Moon made them both evolve. Judge Bug desperately needed development, and Poplio, you will just assume would evolve at some point. Again though, I just wish each of them got their own episode to flourish into an evolution. Well, on the topic of evolution though, this episode pretty much confirms that all the classmates as Pokemon will be fully evolved in this series, due to Lana obtaining the Primarina Sea Crystal, like I stated earlier, and the fact that before this episode aired, Ninetales was revealed to be receiving some anime merchandise, which as we all should know, merchandise spawned this episode's evolutions like a month early, and then there's been merchandise before this episode as well, which has spawned a lot more. So, this must mean that Lily's full picks will be evolving next. Which overall, I really adore this idea of the classmates as having fully evolved Pokemon. It shows the development between them and their Pokemon perfectly, in a way. Finally, for the positives we got in this episode though, we have the animation. Like, bro, it was very pretty in this episode, especially the Charger Bug evolution. It was somewhat like Metapod's evolution into a Butterfree in the original series, which was a very nice twist. Not only that, but apparently in Charger Bug's concept art for the games, that's how it's meant to evolve too. So, it's great to see that the anime is following such small details like that as well. As for other animation highlights though, we also have the lighting reflecting on the characters' faces during the sunrise, and Primarina showcasing its exclusive Z-move. Both were pretty beautiful. In fact, although oh, this might sound crazy, I enjoyed the animation over everything else this episode had to offer, which means the story, the characters, and the music. In fact, let's now start to talk about the music, seeming as it is the last thing I do need to mention regarding this episode. Not gonna lie, there wasn't that much tunes like other episodes that stuck out to me. I only really paid attention to the Sun and Moon Wild Battle music during the Wild Battles, which was very fitting of course, and then I guess there was Primarina singing, which surprisingly reminded me a lot of Melowater, and was pretty cute. Everything else though was just eh. With that said though, that concludes this review. So all that's left is to give a rating for this episode, which I'm gonna give it a 4 or 5 out of 10. Most likely 4 out of 10. I hate to give ratings, I've stated that on this channel many times before, but hopefully that provides you an overall good idea of how I felt about the episode overall. Very in between the positives and negatives. Would I recommend that you watch this episode though if you haven't? Well, sure, it's always nice to see characters getting progression regardless. Anyway, if you have watched this episode though, then once again, let me know in the comments down below what you personally thought of this episode though. I love to hear, as we all have different opinions. But that everybody, now finishes off this review. So, if you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to consider leaving a like, a share, and if you're new here, a subscribe along with it in that bell icon to stay in loop with all things Pokemon anime related. If you want to support this channel in any further way, I also have a Patreon. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching everybody, this is Entity Maze, signing out.